Okay. Trying to improve that uh, have functional game. Uh, pretty good working on that gait cycle. Yeah. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Uh, you know what? This doesn't really make sense to me. Something about the ergonomics of it and all that unilateral stuff doesn't make any sense. Oh, there's a barbell right here. Who'd think I got a little barbell here? What if I just put this on my neck like this and I just started squatting down and up with this? Now that is functional training, huh? A barbell on my neck, compressing my spine, uh, creating who knows how many disc herniations and uh, vertical compressions. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense. Nah. Hey guys, I'm now the Functional Patterns. Today I'm gonna to talk about uh, the functionality of a back squat. Now, before we start this entire video, I, I wanna preface this by saying that I am not against a squat. I do squats. It's just the amount that I do squats in comparison to other exercises that relate to my human biology that involve me doing things like walking and throwing, which are the two main derivatives of functional movement for human beings, uh, I, I generally tend to prioritize human functions over squats. And it's not to say that a squat isn't a human function, it's just something that we rarely find ourselves doing. Just think about this. When's the next time you're going to squat yourself from point A to point B? The fact is you're never going to do that. You're never squat going from point A to point B because it's, it's a stationary movement. Humans were designed to move from point A to point B. How did they do that? They did that by navigating themselves through their gait cycle, right? I, I know I sound like a broken record, but I say this because uh, people tend to want to take my words and then spin them around into some kind of configuration that then says that I hate squats. I don't hate squats. I'm not bashing on squats. What I'm saying is I'm bashing on the continuous use of the sagittal plane of motion on human organisms that are non-sagittal plane based. So if you, if, you have a, if you have a fish and you tell the fish to start running on land, that's not going to work. When you tell somebody to emphasize most of their training around squats, deadlifts, Olympic lifting, you're essentially telling that human being to go completely against the evolutionary path that it went on. And this, keep in mind guys, this is full on science. I'm not making this shit up. It's the truth. This is what human beings, human beings have a set of priorities that we need to follow when it comes to uh, how we move. And what I'm saying is that the squat doesn't necessarily uh, help us with those scenarios. Now, if we break things down biomechanically, because there's a lot of people who lift weights who got, who've gotten really mad at the fact that I say that the squat or the deadlifts are not the holy grails of training, because they're not. They are nonsensical lifts. They were advents by human beings. The barbell was an advent by human beings. Walking, running, and throwing were not advents. Maybe at some point there were inventions by organisms, but we've been doing that for millions of years and it is a part of our DNA. Back squats and deadlifts and exercise similar, today we're gonna focus on the back squat, is not a genetic program. It's not part of our genetic coding to do back squats. It's part of our genetic coding to do running and throwing. This is what we do. So. I'm gonna break it down biomechanically in case you guys can't visualize this just yet. Okay, I wanna talk, start talking about this thing called contralateral reciprocation. Okay, what I mean by that is reciprocation means when things assist one another, right? If you're gonna do me a favor, uh, I'm gonna do you a favor to reciprocate the favor that you did for me, right? The same thing goes with our limbs, right? If, if I'm gonna do, I'm gonna perform an action and in order for my body to institute some kind of a motion, this arm understands that it needs to work very well with this leg. And there there's, should be some kind of an agreement between both of these limbs saying, you know what, we're gonna both potentiate extension. This arm is going to potentiate extension. This leg is going to potentiate extension. And the next thing you know, you're gonna to tend to find yourself walking because these two limbs decided to reciprocate one another. Okay, now how does that relate to a squat? The answer is that it doesn't. A squat is a bilateral lift, meaning that when you're operating unilaterally, which is what we're essentially doing here when we have one leg off the ground and you see these reciprocations happening, that is a unilateral exercise. That means that we have one foot on the ground when we are training. And of course, some of you are gonna say, well, what if I just do a unilateral squat or something like that? I'm not going down that road. What I'm gonna go down the, the road in terms of is how the upper body does not connect to the lower body through a squat. If I'm doing a back squat doing this here and I'm going to drop downward and then pop right back up, there is no reciprocation happening between the top of my body and the bottom of my body. Both of my legs 
are cemented to the ground and I'm coming down and up like this and this replicates nothing that you would find in a gate cycle. Most of what we do, keep in mind, in nature is oriented around the gate cycle. This does not equivocate to this. If we employ the set principle, the specific adaptation to imposed demands, telling you that you know, you're going to adapt to whatever you do most, if you take whatever you adapt to do most over millions of years, you get this, right? You don't get this. Is it, to, is it to say that this is wrong? No, I'm not saying this is wrong. What I'm saying is that it's very limited. And within time, if you continue to keep doing this, it's going to ruin your biomechanics and all the other things that you want to do in life. And of course, for some people, squats are the only things that you're supposed to do in life. Squats, deadlifts, bench presses, these are the only things that matter in life. What I'm talking about are things that relate to human DNA, human biomechanics. And when you look at the mechanics of a squat, especially if you start putting a barbell on your neck and creating axial loads, compressing your spine, at some stage we have to start asking ourselves, how functional is this? And how often should we be doing this? I, if it was up to me, I would tell you that you should maybe do it anywhere between 5% of the time when it comes to your training. The sagittal plane is important, don't get me wrong, but a squat specifically is only one variation of a very, very big uh, uh, option of movements that you're supposed to have and is not the first choice, although it is deemed to be the first choice. So with that said, uh, this is just an opinion. I don't necessarily, because I don't uh, agree with squats being the primary exercise that you need to do, doesn't necessarily mean that you need to believe the exact same thing. We're all entitled to our opinions and I'm just giving you guys my opinion based upon the experience of actually fixing people, actually taking a scoliosis and correcting it. Now I know most people are, are gonna say, well I, well, I guess most people don't even give me a response. When I put those posts online, I don't even get a response. People just stay quiet. They're like, ah, I'm just not even gonna, I'm gonna act like I didn't see what Naudi just put up online so I can keep preserving the nonsense that I've been doing with my training all this time. Um, my concern here is trying to stay objective in specifics to what human beings are, enhancing humans in relations to what they are based upon their genetic coding and building from there. Weightlifting is, a, is, a, is an abstraction. We came we, up with that information uh, we made it up in our heads and then we just called this stuff training and then we assumed that it was supposed to be good for the human body. It's not, uh, especially the, the back squats. That said, again, guys, don't put words in my mouth. I never said squats were bad. I just said they should not be taken as a priority. And when I say they're not taken, be taken as a priority, they should be very low in terms of the totem pole when it comes to what humans need to be fo focusing on. It's clear that this is what we do. Let's stay on point with that, will we? This is Naudi Aguilar reminding you to think intentionally and not habitually.